Chuck, how's that door with, please? Let's get started. Good to see everybody here. Everybody, please stand. We're going to have a prayer led by Reverend Larry Buckland. Let's pray. God, we give you thanks for this beautiful day you have blessed us with. We thank you for our county. We pray for our leadership, our commissioners, and we pray for all of us. And most importantly, we pray for all of our community that we can help Marion County shine. Help us to be what we're called to be, to love all people and to be inclusive of all people. And we give you thanks for that opportunity we have every day. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. Lloyd White, would you lead us in a pledge, please? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Thank you, Lloyd. Commission meeting will come to order. <coughs> Chris, first item, please. We have the acceptance of the minutes from the March 13th, 2019 meeting. Okay, move the commission accept the minutes as presented. Second. Next item. We have exonerations 2019-98 through 2019-115, presented by Mark Troll, the assessor. Pursuant to the recommendations of the assessor, I cross the attorney with the present mind of the exoneration. No, sorry. No, Next item. We have an order confirming and ratifying the fiduciary supervisor's report of claims and settlement reports in the following estates. Middlemas, Lemley, Paul, Larry, Wright, Taylor, Hughes, Nottingham, Manzo, Starsick, Ramsey, Law, Malone, Abedini, Wyckoff, Seifert, Guzzo, Kyle, Nindle, Leary, Floyd, Boyers, <coughs> Esseltante, Van Horn, Lucic, Hawkins, Purdue, Nine, Beaufort, Ray, Riley, and Hunt. And this requires the signature of the commission as well as the clerk. Are there any objections here today for the order confirming and ratifying the fiduciary supervised report of claims and settlement reports? Okay, no objections. Move the commission sign the order. We have a request for advice and consent from the Sheriff, uh, Jimmy Riffle, for the rehiring of Roger Cunningham as Deputy Sheriff, full-time with benefits, effective March 18th, 2019. Okay. I move the commission grants advice and consent to rehire Roger Cunningham as Deputy Sheriff, full-time with benefits, effective March 18th. Welcome back to you. Right, Next slide. We have for the record the statewide transportation enhancement fiscal year 2016 through 2021 program amendment, and that is for the record. For the record, next item. We have for the record the Valley Falls Public Service District reconciliation summary for periods ending 12-31-2018 and 1-31-2019. Also for the record, next item. Uh, for also, for the record, we have notification from Charter Communications that TWC Digital Phone has changed its legal name to Spectrum Advanced Services, LLC, effective 3-1-2019. That's also for the record. Next slide. Um, we actually have some time to kill before our uh, public hearing for uh, the FEMA for the Marion County Floodplain Ordinance Update. Um, that's scheduled for 10-30. Um, okay, Chris, we, uh, just very briefly, the FEMA has mandated that all cities, towns, and counties in the National Floodplain Insurance Program update their floodplain ordinance with approval and signatures of governing body representatives. And uh, we'll have that, we'll hold that hearing at 1030. And um, that shouldn't take very long, Chris. I don't, no. I don't see any. But anyway, if we prior to have a public hearing, we'll go into that at 1030. Uh, we got Lloyd White here today. Lloyd, anybody else stand by sign up? Okay. No, sir. Okay. 
Lloyd, always good to have you here from the Marion County Health Department. Great, great job. Keeps us informed about what's going on. It's good to be here. Um, well, so with the environmental spring, obviously it becomes a busier time for environmental health with uh, a lot of animal encounters and uh, in, a lot of enteric diseases this time of year, so we're keeping pretty busy with that. But I want to give you an update on the, uh, the statewide outbreak of hepatitis A. As of last Friday, there were 2,455 cases, confirmed cases in the state, with 21 deaths. We have in Marion County 14 cases that's tied to the same outbreak. Uh, we had uh, one uh, female who was employed in a child care center. When we got notified by Ruby, we prophylaxed the, the students there that in close contacts of the index case. Uh, prior to going to a child care, she worked at a nursing home, so they, we went and prophylaxed all the, the residents at risk of the nursing home. Um, we have obtained an additional 125 doses of Hep A for police, fire, EMS, uh, homeless population, or any at-risk groups for that uh, that want that. We have, in those efforts, we have uh, administered 165 vaccinations. Uh, we went to the Union Mission, we went to uh, the Soup Opera, and we haven't been successful in contacting or getting into the, uh, this, the Scott Place as of yet. Um, so we would hopefully to, with being proactive, we can decrease the number of reported cases moving forward. Uh, some other things that we're kind of watching is there's a, there's a syphilis outbreak in Mon County, uh, as well as the Mid-Ohio Valley Parkersburg area. Now, to date, we haven't seen any increased cases in our county. We're still offering testing uh, to anybody who, who uh, is in the at-risk uh, population. So we continue to evaluate the effectiveness of all of our programs. Uh, are we meeting our set objectives and goals? And I think we can answer that by one simple question. Are we really making a difference in the lives of those we have the privilege and honor to serve? Well, I've told you on numerous cases about our harm reduction clinic, and we continue to have that. Um, I have to tell you that I'm extremely proud that uh, today, I think a couple of weeks ago, we had two individuals actually come back to the office, bring back their supplies, and said that we're no longer a substance abuser. That is success. Um, so hopefully uh, programs we put in place will continue to do that. It's a complex issue. Uh, one of the things that the experts say, the best thing we can do is have comprehensive harm reduction strategies. And we do, we have that. Uh, we have a comprehensive program at our office uh, that, you know, needle exchange is part of it, but we offer uh, so many things. We offer vaccination, we offer testing, we offer counseling. So uh, when we have individuals come back and say, listen, I'm, I'm no longer a substance abuser, then obviously that, uh, that lets us know that we're doing the right things. We continue to offer an Arcan training to police, fire, and EMS. We have the 4.0 that's uh, for non-affiliated EMS agencies, police, and fire. Uh, I just ordered another 50 doses today, uh, and that's available to anybody who wants trained on, who wants to administer it. Um, it's a safety thing for police. Obviously, uh, you still have users that are carrying around needles in their pockets, and so one of the things, the, the risk factor for police officers, obviously, as they're you know, patting someone down, they have a risk of being in contact with a, a Sharpie and needle. Uh, you know, we always look at the harm reduction, and, and it's, the numbers are very low to those folks who have gotten to use, be a substance abuser by prescription drugs. Nonetheless, one of the things that we always deal with is how do we deal with pain? How do we get folks that have chronic pain to get off of this substance abuse? So we partner with WVU. We now offer a chronic pain self-management course. Uh, it's a six-week program at our office, and it meets for two and a half hours and it teaches techniques to deal with pain, stress, and tiredness, uh, correct use of medication, and how that you use your mind to manage pain. So we've had two of those courses, and, and, and the, uh, the attendance was really well, uh, well attended. So we're hoping that that, along with some of the other programs, will, will kind of go a long way in toward getting folks uh, off of substance abuse. So that's pretty much about it. You guys have any questions? Uh, that's a, that's a major effort to try to battle the, the, the fight that's out there with the point of use and the, trying to keep people alive and everything else that you do, but you, you've got Narcan, you've, you've been able to distribute that out to a lot of different areas now that uh, I know saves lives, I know the people's lives, Mary has been saved because of the right people have had that in, in their hands, but um, you got plenty of doses that you've got plenty of to be able to distribute? We do, we have, and I just ordered another 50 doses today. 
Uh, we have plenty of the four point of the Narcan, that's for police, fire, EMF, non affiliated EMS. Uh, now, we don't have the 2.0. Oh, the 2.0 is what we give to clients or the at risk uh, abusers and family members of abusers that, uh, that, that typically would save their life in the event of an overdose. We don't have that. We're still working on trying to get that through WVU as a cooperative agreement. So we're still working to get that. I'm, I remain hopeful that we can. We applied for a grant um, last week. We finished up our paperwork. Um, due to some staffing turnover in the Office of Drug Control Policy, uh, it's probably not going to be a while before we hear the results of that. Where we're successful, I think we will be. Uh, that should allow us to purchase a 2.0 Narcan on the open market. Yeah, pretty long shelf life on this stuff. But about a year. Okay. Yeah, even though it's expired, they still tell you go ahead and give it. You're not going to hurt anything if you're not successful. You're not going to hurt anyone by giving it. Uh, so, but it, it does have an expiration date. Thank you for keeping up on that. It's important for Mary County. Stay on top of the things you talked about. Appreciate the good job that you do. Uh, thanks for coming and giving us your report today. Well, you know, I, I have to tell you this. Uh, we can't do what we do without your support. Uh, your support allows us to do what we do. And it's, again, at the end of the day, government's responsibility, first and foremost, is for the health, safety, and well-being of their citizens. And so you guys allow us to do that. For that, I, on behalf of every citizen of Marion County, thank you so very much. Well, thank you. It's a part of what we do, too, to make sure that the funded. But we funded the health department as partial funded of, of your total budget for many, many years. And I'm sure it's very, very important to Marion County that you're there. Thank you. Chris, is any, anything else? Uh, I'd like to, maybe you, these guys might have a little something to say. I'd like to address one thing that, uh, for just a few minutes, it's about our roads, secondary roads in Marion County. Uh, I received a list yesterday that's prepared, and I couldn't get over it. It's 50 pages long, and uh, it was just amazing to me. I know these guys might have something to say about it too, but briefly, I'll tell you that after looking at that and started reading it, when Chris sent the email out to us, I assumed he sent it to everybody at the same time, but I got to looking at that, and I thought, my gosh, nearly every road in Marion County, every secondary road in Marion, I live in outlying areas. I live in, outside of Manning, on about 250. Travel a lot of these about every day. And uh, I spent two and a half hours yesterday evening just driving in some of the roads that they mentioned in my end of the county. And it was absolutely incredible. My wife and I, uh, it was just pothole after pothole. And what had been fixed was uh, looked like a speed bump. You had to slow down many, many times traveling up Bingaman Road and uh, out towards uh, Wyatt and that area uh, that we traveled. I couldn't get over it. I mean, it's just that how bad it is. We traveled just from down from where I live, Rachel Road. Uh, again, you had to almost come to a stop, or you would do. And I had a three, a, a big truck. I didn't want to damage it, and usually I could take a pretty good punishment for roads. But they're absolutely incredible how how bad they are, and it's it's all over the state. And when we were asked to present a list or asked to participate in presenting a list, that we decided to to do that. So we help somewhat with the, the Linda outreaching to some of the outlying areas and some mayors to get a list together. So we sent the list uh, to the superintendent of the Department of Highways and uh, when I got today's paper, which I received the list yesterday, I was reading uh, an article in here where it says that uh, the governor asked uh, all the divisional highway district managers last week to compile a list of secondary roads that are most in need of repair. They also asked them to suggest any projects that need continuous or aggressive maintenance. It says on goes on to say that um, the, the the department, the county department, superintendent's department, of highways um, sent the list in, and he said the what got me though is the statement says from the governor that these lists are not prioritized, but are for informational purposes and don't guarantee repairs will be completed. But he then went on to say that he's pledged to fix neglected secondary roads, hire workers, and buy equipment, unspecified, funding will be pulled from revenue surplus and bond money. We have to do something about these secondary roads. It's just incredible to me that how, how and it, it seems like it happens every time, year this time of the year, and it's a great burden placed upon the Department of Highways to fix the potholes, but it just didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen in one year. This has been going on. And, and it needs to be addressed. The county commission has absolutely nothing to do with highways. 
We get calls every day. I get calls constantly. But we don't tell them, we, we, we don't say that we can't. We, we do, we pass the information on to the superintendent of the Marion County Department of Highways or to District 4. I've had many calls go over there to try to help what we can. Um, it, it's just an ongoing, the, the number one problem in Marion County, we have health issues, we have opioid uh, abuse, we have a lot of things going on. But the one thing that affects everybody that, that goes anywhere are the secondary roads. It's just terrible, the condition that they're in. And it, it looks like we're making a little progress in identifying them, and maybe a little bit of progress in finding funding to fix them. But without prioritizing what needs to be done first, I mean, 50 pages of, of repairs, Ernie was looking at today, and he, he said, I mean, where do you start, you know? Well, you know? What do you do? I mean, it's, it's almost every road in the county, basically. Listed on that fund, listed on the, on the end. I, very true. And we, uh, but, you know, we've got to start somewhere by identifying the problem and by finding some funding for the problem we need to prioritize the problem and get started and the sooner the better you know we're, we're the, the weather's breaking now and uh, I know it's a tough job again we participate and help as much as we can all we are is a pipeline or a conduit between the problem and who can solve the problem we don't have heavy equipment we don't have anything to do with fixing the roads but we're elected officials, we're, res we're responsible for answering questions. And people that are taxpayers, I feel responsible too. But we need to, we, to them, we need to help all we can. So we participated somewhat in identifying the problem. Uh, we'll stay on top of it as much as we can. They need to be fixed, uh, and, and we'll, we'll continue to do all we can to facilitate uh, getting this problem taken care of. I just want to bring that up, we had a little time to kill it. Uh, maybe you already have some things to say. You know, the only thing I could add is, you know, we know the uh, secondary roads are in bad shape, but you know, when they come up with this roads to prosperity, uh, you know, they really sold the thing 100% uh, to our uh, constituents here in the county. But what upset me the most is uh, that they did not come to the county commission or any que question a single county uh, official as to what roads necessary to be repaired would be helpful to us. They did not consult us at all. They come up with an I-79 project uh, to build a uh, third lane, redo the bridges, and replace uh, Kingmont Bridge, the next bridge, next bridge down at tens of millions, or maybe hundreds of millions of dollars. And not once were we ever consulted as to what the priorities of this county should be. And obviously from the uh, condition of our secondary roads and our main roads, Route 250 uh, to Mannington, and, uh, through Whitehall. Uh, obviously, it's nice to have a, a 79 passage for people to pass through here, but you know, people get off here once in a while and have to be able to get home in a safe manner. And you cannot do that here in Marion County. And it, it is really a shame. But, uh, if they uh, are going to use some of the road funds or perhaps uh, float another bond issue, I think they should do a better job of coordinating with all 55 counties rather than operating out of the state. And, uh, using the, uh, the judgment of individuals who don't actually live here and understand uh, the operations of this county. Uh, the only other, uh, you have anything to add about the road? I hear them every day on my bus. I ain't <laughs> well, all of them. Well, it's rough. They are. And, uh, Bernie and, and Rick, I know we, we're out and about. We, we see what they are. I, I even drove out to uh, Hogwick Hall and the roads up there. We're trying to get something out there. You know, our biggest concern here is economic development. Without that, we, don't, we can't do anything else. But economic development is so, so vitally important to us. Well, we have an opportunity out there with some things happening, and, and that road's in, in terrible shape. We're going to try to find, seek some funding through the, uh, what is the industrial bond road money, Belinda, to, to help out there because there's been a big investment out there in four or five businesses. But uh, just to get from there to back to the, uh, you know, back to the interstate, which is that far away, just uh, the condition of the roads are terrible. We, they're everywhere. But we're working as hard as we can, and Ernie's right, uh, when they spend, you know, millions and millions of dollars to put a third lane bridge in on the interstate, that's nice. But what about everybody that travels these roads Rick drives a school bus on them every day and then beats a bus to death. I'm driving on them trying to get to where I go and, and Ernie's out and about with what he does and um, we see it. It needs to be addressed. People got to come work, work, they're already pissed off. 
Yeah, they ain't got the work yet. Yeah, 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 well, they are. I mean, it's, it's, my wife, she, she just shook her head about half the way she went on. Damn, I said, like, come almost a complete problem. stop to be able to get, you know, through all these holes. It's, and it's, and these, are, these are roads that, these are roads that, uh, that are highly traveled, yeah. too. I mean, you know, 218 Bingaman Road, that's, there's a lot of traffic out through there. I mean, it's, you switch all that area down there. Anyway, um, yeah, we get all the complaint ends up. We get to share our net uh, <laughs> as a big part, but we didn't get any part, any input. And, uh, I think they should uh, That's kind of address it in another fashion. Kind of the point they're trying, trying to make. We'll, we help all we can with, with what we can do, but all we are, and I'm sure they get tired of us calling and asking them to take a look at this and take a look at that. But uh, we owe that to the people that, that put us in these seats to try to help as much as we can. And I want it's not gone unnoticed, and we're doing all we can from this end. Yeah, and I would like to say we have a new director down at uh, District 4, Darby uh, Clayton, and he has done a tremendous job. I'll tell you, I, I've met with him a couple of times. He's very receptive. He's actually got things done. Uh, I hope we're heading in the right direction. I think we are. Need more work. I'll give him credit. Yeah. Uh, he's come in here and really stepped, up, stepped it up, and uh, he's a communicator, and that's half the battle. Hmm. We can, again, uh, if he. If the governor gets the money from the uh, pulled from revenue surplus of the rainy day fund money and some bond money, we've identified the problem. That a source of money. Let's prioritize. Let's get out there and get something done, and we'll continue to do all we can on this end. We've got about five more minutes before we have the hearing, so we'll we'll stand in recess until 10:30. Then we're going to have a, a should be a brief public hearing uh, to update the Marion County floodplain ordinance. You're welcome to stay. I'd like to mention one more thing. Uh, I'd like to personally thank on behalf of the County Commission uh, for the Raymond Knight's funeral. The firemen, the police, uh, they bestowed a tremendous honor on him yesterday. They extended their ladder tracks, uh, trucks up over 250 and put a flag across the road. Uh, it was really nice. Raymond, uh, uh, he was very selfless. He gave everything to the fire department. He lived for that fire department. Uh, I don't think we'll meet another individual that uh, would be uh, as dedicated as he was for some time. Uh, uh, just want to extend uh, our uh, sympathies and stuff to his family. I appreciate the, uh, what the firemen and the police did for him yesterday. Also, I'll make quick mention too because it's always good to see that we have uh, the three elected officials here, Mark Traw, our assessor is here, to appreciate him coming and keeping up with what all's going on and Ron Starr, our circuit clerk. It's very nice to see Ronda here and uh, we also have Timmy Brewer for our sheriff, he's a regular attendee. We appreciate uh, Timmy making Glenda B for our economic development uh, director of uh, development. So, uh, appreciate y'all showing up. Take a little break, and we'll get back and have this hearing, and uh, we'll reconvene here in about four or five minutes. You <laughs> 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 believe it? I left mine at home, I'll get something done today. <laughs>